everyone, this is Nora. I recently wrote a blog post on SAP's AI portfolio. You should definitely go and check it out to get a broad overview on the AI products at SAP. The month of April is also the AI Community Month at SAP. So stay tuned for more AI content and look out for the upcoming AI Code Challenge. The March 2022 release of the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model, CAP, is out, bringing CDSJS to version 5.9. Here are just a few highlights of the release. From a database perspective, CDS can now automatically generate native database referential integrity constraints for managed to one associations and compositions. By using the annotations SQL prepend and SQL append, you can add arbitrary SQL statements to the data definition language statements that are generated by the compiler. This means you can use database features not yet supported natively by CDS. And talking of database features, CDS does now natively support HANA aggregate functions. As well as these database updates, there are some general updates and improvements to the CDS language, as well as some important changes to the Node.js and Java SDKs. You can find all the details of this March 2022 release in the usual place at cap.cloud.sab. Hi everyone. We have exciting news to share with you for SAP UI5 and Open UI5. Version 1.100 is now available for both deliveries. One of the highlights for me personally is the new Horizon Dark theme that brings a dark mode to the popular Horizon theme. Definitely check that out if you haven't done already. Another exciting development in the UI5 ecosystem is the enablement of UI5 web components for regular UI5 projects. This means you can now use UI5 web components in your freestyle UI5 web applications by simply using additional libraries, at least with OpenUI5 for now. And this is a great step towards streamlining UI5 offerings and further improving the development experience. I highly recommend to check out Peter's blog post to read all about it and then try it for yourself. Last week, the new quarterly release 2201 of SAP HANA Cloud became available. You can do self-service upgrade of your database instances in SAP HANA Cloud to the newer version now. With this release, you can now do self-service upgrades of data lake instances too. There are numerous new features and improvements, so let's have a look at some of them. The Database Explorer now allows you to browse the content stored in data lake files containers. This is in addition to using APIs and CLI available already before. The new version 1.4 of the SAP HANA Database Explorer Visual Studio Code extension brings several noteworthy features, like a possibility to order local database connections that use credentials maintained in SAP HANA user store. Talking about tooling, when working on data modeling, you are now able to control whether preview queries in SAP Business Application Studio are executed automatically, you receive enhanced control over where filters are applied in federated scenarios, and additional options to prune data sources and thus reduce resource consumption and increase query performance. Multimodal capabilities of SAP HANA database have been extended with the new functions providing better ways to query and update JSON documents, especially arrays. Plus, you can use a new graph method for the graph traversal statements, the Dijkstra algorithm. A notable new functionality in the embedded machine learning are new AutoML functions, allowing you to automatically generate and select such pipeline models for classification and regression ML scenarios. These new AutoML capabilities can be leveraged with the SQL and Python interfaces alike. And these are just a few to mention. Please check complete set of links in the description of today's news episode. By the way, if you are new to the topic, then there is a brand new open SAP course for you that started this week called Write the SAP HANA Wave, Fundamentals and Insights into Cloud Databases. The current week is the introduction week, which will be followed by data integration and modeling, architecture and administration, 
and then optional advanced topics. Happy learning! There's some hot news this week that crosses the entire SAP BTP topic area. First, we have the announcement that ASUG, the America's SAP Users Group, is launching a new SAP Technology Platform Community Alliance. This is a whole new type of community organization within ASUG that will combine all the peer groups that fall under the SAP BTP functionality. So for any developers that are ASUG members, this is going to be a great new way to connect, influence, and educate on all things SAP BTP. To kick off this new community alliance, there will be a town hall launch event on Friday, April 15th. Check out the link in the show description for all the registration and event details. Also on the topic of all things BTP, we want to highlight the excellent SAP Integration and Extension Talk podcast. This week's episode 81 dropped featuring an interview with Arthur Perry, a development architect with SAP BTP Runtimes and Core Stakeholder Engagement Team. This was a deep dive discussion about developing, running, and managing containerized applications and extensions on Kubernetes with the help of SAP BTP and the BTP Kima Runtime. And if you aren't familiar with Kubernetes or the Kima topics discussed there, then I'd suggest a quick catch up by watching the recent two minutes of cloud native videos published right here on this channel by our own Kevin Musick.